Welcome to Networking Rx, a podcast devoted to helping business professionals like you enhance your networking skills in order to become more proficient giving and receiving quality business referrals and improving the overall quality of your life and the lives of those around you. The Networking Rx podcast is a production of AmSpirit Business Connections, an organization whose mission is to empower business success through networking. Welcome back to another episode of the Networking Rx podcast. My name is Frank Agan, founder and president of AmSpirit Business Connections and your host for this episode. What are the three most repeated words in the Networking Rx podcast? Drum roll, please. They are know, like, and trust. I've probably said those in each and every one of the episodes. Again, all things being equal, we do business with and we associate with those we know, we like, and we trust. In fact, even when things are unequal, we do business with those we know, like, and trust. This explains why we do business with, say, an insurance agent for years, even though we know we could save money somewhere else, or we use our favorite realtor or keep the same attorney or accountant. No, like, trust. Those three things are the quintessential foundation of any lasting relationship, personal or professional. Today, I want to focus on an aspect related to one portion of that trifecta. No. They're all important, but knowing gets, it, knowing gets us started. It's the first point in the trifecta and gets that trifecta moving. After all, without the no, we'd have no ability to make an assessment as to whether we like someone. And without without the like, we we can't or we won't not make a determination on trust. So implied within the whole concept of knowing is remembering. Think about it. Your network will not know you unless they can effectively remember you. And again, without knowing, there's no like or trust. So this, net, this episode of the Networking RS, RX podcast is devoted to helping our network remember you or aspects of you. The more they remember, the more they know. Speaking of remembering, just to interject quickly, AmSpirit Business Connections has a unique franchise opportunity that involves helping small business professionals become more successful through a referral-based networking program. It only involves a couple hours a day, a few days a week, and would be a great franchise for an attorney, accountant, realtor, business coach, or consultant of various kinds to add on to what they're already doing and get better networked at the same time. Why just be in a business network when you can own a business network? If you or someone you know would like to learn more, please contact me using the email that we provide in the show notes or at the end of the podcast. Okay, back to the program, which is on remembering. Uh, Studies have shown that when people hear something, a presentation, a portion of a conversation, even as simple as a 30 second introduction, they tend to recall certain parts of it more readily than others. What is remembered more readily is not a matter of chance or luck. What others remember is a function of tricks, hacks, tactics, that speakers or presenters use to ensure that what they convey to others will be remembered. And these are tactics that you can easily and should employ to have what you say remembered. And what do you hope to have remembered? Well, it could be lots of things. Uh, You certainly would hope that people in your network remember things about you personally and professionally. You certainly hope they remember things about your product or service, if you're an entrepreneur or self-employed. You certainly hope they remember things about your company and why it's trustworthy, remarkable, and unique. To be clear, this episode is not necessarily about making a great presentation to a client or let's say your board of directors, though it could apply. This is about making everyday communications memorable. In fact, everyday communications are probably more important than the formal presentations that you're tapped to do from time to time. No, there's no probably about it. The everyday communications about who, what, where, when, and how of yourself is far more important than, say, the sales presentation. Why? Because it's the daily communication where you drive, know, like, and trust that ends up leading to the sales presentation opportunities. So the everyday communications is far more important 
than the big opportunities we have. The everyday communications are the things that we really need people to remember because that leads to the bigger things. With that lead in, here are five ideas or insights to help you make your communications more memorable um, and make you stick in the minds of others. <clears throat> Number one, begin powerfully. You can give your communication a powerful start by doing two things. First, connect with whomever you're talking to, even if the audience is only one. This certainly requires that you make eye contact, but also do some other things. Perhaps ask a question, whether it's a real question, something like, about how many years are you away from retiring? Or something that's rhetorical, something like, do you enjoy paying all those taxes to the government? Or you could tell an entertaining story, something that's related to what you're looking to communicate. It might be a quick example how you've helped someone or a quick overview of how, about how someone didn't have what you sell and got into trouble. Or possibly another way to connect is to issue a challenge. Something like imagine going on vacation and coming back without a mountain of work waiting for you. You're only limited by your own creativity in talking about yourself and creating a powerful beginning when you have something to say. The second way to have a powerful beginning is preview. Remember Public Speaking 101? Tell them what you're gonna tell them. Listeners always tend to remember more when they get a sense as to the message you're going to give or a point you're going to make. For example, in starting this program, I told you there were gonna be five items. You're expecting five items. And as you kind of count through, you know when we're counting down and there's one left or two left. Um, so the number one networking recall tactic is begin powerfully. The second is repeat regularly. Remember Do Dr. Martin Luther King? He drilled a powerful idea into the nation's conscience by rhythmically repeating, I have a dream, I have a dream, I have a dream. While you might not have a dream, you certainly have something worth remembering or at least something you want others to remember. So work into your communication often the things you want people to remember. Free initial consultation, over a hundred years of combined experience in our office, the lowest, the most, the, the whatever. Think of this podcast, we keep driving away at no like and trust, no like and trust. And there'll be other mantras. Why repeat things? So they're remembered. Repetition, repetition, repetition. Don't be obnoxious about it but casual and tactically repeat what you want remembered and it'll be remembered. Okay, begin powerfully, repeat regularly. A third networking recall tactic is emphasize unusually. There was once a member at Amspirit Business Connections who routinely shared that he gave your ceiling something beautiful to look at. He sold flooring. There's another member, a locksmith, whose final four phone numbers spell K-E-Y-S and he shared that often. Your brain and the brains of those you communicate will st are, are always seeking stimulation and entertainment. And as such, you should use humor, wit, or simple analogy to allow your audience to grasp and remember key points. How you emphasize, however, is not limited to what you say. You can also add emphasis in how you say it. This can be done through use of posture, which you obviously can't see on a podcast, with, same with gestures, eye contact, but voice inflection, any or all of these can be powerful to help your message become more memorable. An important point to make is you don't have to employ all of these. Each is just an arrow in your communication quiver. Certainly, if you have an hour long program, you can work all of these in at some point. If your communication is only 30 seconds, you might only be able to use one, two, or three. You have to use your judgment. Again, don't be obnoxious. Be tactical. Um, but again, to be remembered is to be known, and to be known is put you on the road to being liked and trusted as well. Okay, back to the networking recall list. To recap, number one, begin powerfully. Two, repeat regularly. Three, which we just covered, emphasize unusually. Number four, maximize involvement. The more those you communicate with are involved, the more vividly they'll remember what you have to say. So create opportunities to get them involved, which, which could include, but is not necessarily limited to these ideas, some of which are repeats from before. You can challenge them. You can ask them a real question or a rhetorical question. You can use them in your example. 
it's very powerful to weave someone's life into what you're, the point you're trying to make. Another idea, you can ask for their physical participation. Ask them to hold something, to keep track of something in their mind for you. You should work to engage those you communicate with into what you have to say. Allow them to develop a sense of personal association as to what your message is. That will help them remember. And that will ensure that they know you better, which again leads to like and trust. Okay, we're getting there. Number one, the number one networking recall tactic is begin powerfully. Two, repeat regularly. Three, the third uh, networking recall tactic is emphasize unusually. Number four, maximize involvement. And finally, the fifth, the fifth networking recall tactic, and powerfully. Think of the best novel you've ever read, the best movie you've ever seen, the best story you've ever heard. What made them great? A strong, powerful ending. When you communicate, you need to do the same. If you give someone a list of 15 items and ask them to repeat that list, they'll remember some towards the beginning and several towards the end. The point is, is that the end of whatever you communicate has the greatest likelihood of being remembered. Capitalize on this. It's human nature, it's just brain science. Engineer a strong finish and recap the essence of your message. Let's quickly revisit the lessons of Public Speaking 101. Not only do you tell them what you're going to tell them and then tell them, you also tell them what you told them. In short, recap the essence of your entire message at the end. So to follow on my advice, here's this episode in a nutshell. Productive, successful networking stems from people knowing you, liking you, and trusting you. Knowing is the linchpin or starting point, however. Before you can be liked and trusted, you must be known. To be known, one must be remembered, and therefore it's vital to employ tactics to ensure that this remembering is happening. These networking tactics can include, and again, you don't have to do them all in one message. Um, if you have a short message, just one or two. If you have a longer message, certainly try and weave them all in. But these networking tactics include, begin powerfully, two, repeat regularly, three, emphasize unusually, four, maximize involvement, and finally, the fifth, and powerfully. Be known, liked, and trusted starts with being remembered. Thanks for joining us on the Networking Rx podcast. Please put what you've learned into action today and let us know if you have questions, comments, or ideas for future topics. You can email them to us at podcast at amspirit.com. That's A-M-S-P-I-R-I-T dot com. Finally, so you never miss an episode, be sure to subscribe to the Networking Rx podcast through iTunes, Overcast, or however you receive your podcasts. Now get out and network with someone. The Networking Rx podcast is the copyright production of Amspirit Business Connection. All rights reserved.